Okay. Well, I'm uh, Dennis Delaney. I'm the Extension uh, Specialist for Soybeans and Conservation Cropping Systems at Auburn University. And just want to talk some today about soybean harvest considerations. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that soybean dry matter peaks out at physiological maturity. Uh, from then on, uh, all it's got to do is, is decrease after that. So the sooner we can get it out of the field after, after maturity, uh, the better. Uh, they can, dry matter quality, uh, you know, pounds per acre uh, out of the field decrease. Every time there's enough moisture, it's present in seed for respiration or seed decay organisms to, to start in that seed. And one thing, soybeans, they can absorb moisture so quickly that even heavy dews at night can be enough to increase seed moisture enough to start promoting these losses. You know, a little bit every night, but that's enough to, to add up after a while. Uh, you mentioned there's, you know, several growth stages that soybeans go through. Uh, one of the final ones is, is the full C stage, or what we call R6, uh, the green bean stage. That's when the seed completely fills the pot out, usually it's uh, big and round, kind of pushes it out some, uh, but it's still, at that point, still filling in some dry matter. It's, it's full size, but dry matter is still increasing and replaces some moisture. But only about 60% of that dry seed weight is, is there at the beginning of the stage. Uh, to find out when that's fully mature, uh, the best way is to open up a few pods in the top of the plant and check that white membrane that holds the seed into the pod wall. Uh, it should be uh, holding on to the pod wall. That's still feeding the seed. When that membrane dries up, then that's it. From then on, the pod, the seed is just starting to dry on down uh, and you're at maturity. Uh, from then on, uh, since the moisture is low enough, we can go ahead and harvest without a loss. Uh, normally, standard soybean moisture is, is 13.0%. Uh, a lot of times at buying points, elevators, you know, there are discounts for moisture above 13%, but usually farmers don't get any bonus for being below that. So they start harvesting later than 13% than or as beans dry down more and more. Uh, for, for about every percentage moisture less in, in soybeans is about 1.1% shrink. Uh, get down to 10% moisture like we did last year when it got real dry in the fall, that could be 3.3% uh, loss of the, the total weight of the soybeans that basically you're, you're giving away to the elevator. Uh, 50 bushel beans, uh, that could be $16.50 an acre for $10 a bushel soybeans. So it pays to go ahead and maybe start a little bit early uh, harvesting and kind of average out at that 13%. Uh, actually, harvest can begin at, at 16 to 22 uh, percent total moisture in the seed if artificial drying is available. Uh, you want to get those beans dried pretty quickly because they, they will mold uh, fairly rapidly in, in the bin if they've got that high moisture. But again, uh, moisture can fluctuate pretty rapidly. Beans will take on moisture pretty quickly and, and give them off pretty quickly too. Uh, we've noticed harvesting some, some tests in the field that we've lost up to 1%, a half percent of moisture per hour on a real hot, windy afternoon. So you can start out fairly high and end up you know, on the low side. So if you can average that in on a load of beans or in the bin, uh, it would be good. Um, normally it's good to begin harvest around 14, 15% moisture if you can, if you've got a way to store it or, or get it dried down. Uh, and then as harvest progresses, you probably have some that will be well under 13%. Uh, so you kind of get that average and, and minimize the harvest losses when they're getting too dry or deteriorate late in the season. But one thing to note, the longer that harvest is delayed, the, the more harvest losses can increase. Uh, things like lodging, where they fall down uh, on the ground, of course, that keeps moisture in the plants and pods that much higher. You get a lot of molds, deterioration in the seed. Uh, shattering uh, as the seed and the pods get drier, uh, both standing in the field and the plant, and especially as a cutter bar. The combine hits them and shakes them a little bit. Uh, you can lose a lot of seed out on the ground. And splits 
losses also increases its soil mo seed moisture decreases. Uh, and, and of course that leads to deterioration in the men too. Uh, below 11% those losses increase pretty rapidly uh, and they also increase if harvest is delayed more than about two weeks past maturity. About 0.2 to 0.3% yield loss per day is, is kind of a good rule of thumb. So when they're ready we need to get them out of the field. Uh, just to estimate what you might be losing out in the field Roughly 45 beans per square foot equals one bushel per acre loss. And they can occur both with the combine head um, thrashing as they're getting cut. Again, that, that cutter bar hitting them, shaking the plants, and in the combine during the thrashing operation. Uh, it's good to go ahead and count the beans per square foot behind the combine, and that'll tell you the total loss. But also while you're cutting, go ahead and stop, lift the head and back up a few feet, and then count the beans that were under the head uh, to find out what the header loss is. And then you can subtract that from the total loss to find out what you're losing inside the combine. And there may be some adjustments you can make in the combine to kind of minimize that then once you know where the losses are coming from. Uh, of course, starting to cut early or high moisture soybeans, there are some disadvantages to it and it needs to be dried pretty quickly to avoid damage. Elevators may not be ready for soybeans, particularly if they're high moisture, uh, if they're still handling corn. And sometimes they can be some pretty steep discounts uh, for high moisture. And, and you've got shrink, drying costs, and extra handling. They may not even accept them. So that, that's a disadvantage there. So you may need some on-farm drying and storage if you want to start at higher moisture. Uh, these early soybeans, uh, early soybean harvest may need desiccation. Uh, just to help dry them up, it'll flow through the combine a little better because uh, they can really slow harvest down. Uh, but need to be proactive if you think you may need a desiccation on there. Uh, they need time to work. Most of them need a week, 10 days or more to, to actually work and, and dry down the weeds and stems, and, but particularly to follow the pre-harvest intervals. Uh, some of them are fairly short, uh, let's say aim, uh, sharp in the three days, but uh, one that we use quite a bit for desiccation, Paraquat, uh, different formulations of that, is a full 15 days. So you really need to be proactive if you're going to use that, uh, that desiccant because you start waiting 15 days after the beans are already ready to harvest and you find out they're too green, you can get into a lot of losses, a lot of shattering losses in the meantime. So you want to go ahead, if you think you need to use them, go ahead and use them and, and start that clock going. Uh, with that, I'll end and, and uh, answer any questions. So Dennis, um, I think you bring up a good point about the, um, the, the moisture mm -hmm. content, how important that is. Uh, I'm going to talk in a minute about storing corn and mm -hmm. keeping it, at the, putting it into the right moisture or having a grain dryer so that you can dry it down is, is critical for safe storage, especially because people tend to keep corn longer in the bin. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I, you know, I think uh, in terms of soybean, that's going to be huge if they're going with these high moisture and bringing them in, they're going to have to have the dryer mm -hmm. capacity to sort of bring it, get that moisture content down mm -hmm. and, and before they load them in the bin. So yes. It's, it's really... Uh, putting in wet grain into a bin is a recipe for disaster. Yes. So, so mm -hmm. drying will be a huge consideration there, don't you think? Yes, I think so. Yeah, with the with the high protein and oil content in soybeans, uh, yeah, they can spoil really, really rapidly. Turn rancid and and, uh, and just not making good quality oil. So the mills may may reject them uh, on that. So yeah, if if they any high moisture at all, they need to be dried pretty quickly. So the staggered out planting that we've had this year on soybeans, how's that going to sort of affect how people, is it going to make that, give people more of an opportunity to get things harvested at the right time, or is it just going to result in a big crunch at the end, or what are your thoughts on how this is going to impact our, our soybean harvest? It should. It should help spread out uh, and harvest some. Uh, the I know it, it may end up... Uh, pushing this back into real late fall, like late October, November harvesting in normally 
shorter days, cooler temperatures where beans just don't dry out near as quickly, uh, muddy conditions. So that could really slow down harvest at, at the end um, and make efforts to, to harvest beans a little higher moisture than, than normal also. Any other questions? Okay. okay. And then stop recording right there. <laughs>